speaking of which, if we could uh, talk about GPT-3 a little bit, I think it's an interesting thought provoking set of ideas that OpenAI is pushing forward. I think it's good for us to talk about the limits and the possibilities of neural networks. So in general, what are your thoughts about this recently released very large 175 billion parameter language model? So I, have, I haven't uh, directly evaluated it yet. From what I have seen on Twitter and uh, you know, other people evaluating it, it looks very intriguing. You know, I, am, I am very intrigued by some of the properties it is displaying. And, uh, and of course, the text generation uh, part of that was already evident in GPT-2, you know, that it can generate coherent text over uh, uh, long distances. That was, uh, but of course, the weaknesses are also pretty visible in saying that, okay, it is not really carrying a world state around. Um, and, you know, sometimes you get sentences like, I went up the hill to reach the valley or thing. You know, like yeah. some, you know, completely incompatible statements. Or when you're traveling from one place to the other, it doesn't take into account the time of travel, things like that. So those things, I think, will happen less in GPT-3 because it is trained on even more data. And uh, so, and it, has, it can do even more longer distance uh, uh, coherence. Um, but it will still have the fundamental limitations that it doesn't have a world model uh, and it can't run simulations in its head to find whether something is true in the world or not. Do you think within, so it's taking a huge amount of text from the internet and forming a compressed representation, do you think in that could could emerge something that's an approximation of, of a world model, which essentially could be used for reasoning? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, so I'm not talking about GPT-3, I'm talking about GPT-4, 5, and GPT-10. Yeah, I mean, they will look more impressive than GPT-3. So you can, if you take that to the extreme, then uh, a Markov chain of first, just first order, you know, if you, if you uh, go to, um, I'm, I'm taking it the other extreme. If you read Shannon's uh, book, mm -hmm. right, uh, he has a model of English text, which is based on first order Markov chains second order Markov chains, third order Markov chains, and saying that, okay, third order Markov chains look better than uh, first order Markov chains. Yeah. And so does that mean a first order Markov chain has a model of the world? Yes, it does. Uh, so yes, in that level, uh, when you go higher order models or more uh, sophisticated structure in the model like the transformer networks have, yes, they have a model of the text world. Mm -hmm. um, but that is not a model of uh, the world. It's it's a model of the text world and it will have in, interesting uh, properties and it will be useful, but just scaling it up is not going to give us AGI or natural language understanding or meaning. So the, the question is uh, whether being forced to compress a very large amount of text yeah. forces you to construct things that are very much like, because um, the ideas of concepts and meaning is a, yeah. is a, is a spectrum. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah. Uh, so in order to form that kind of compression, maybe it will uh, be forced to figure out uh, abstractions which look awfully a lot like the kind of things that we think about as, uh, as concepts, as world models, as common sense. Is that possible? No, I don't think it is possible because the information is not there. Well, the, the information is uh, is there behind the text, right? No, because unless somebody has written down all the details about how everything works in the world to the, the absurd amounts like, okay, it is easier to walk forward than backward, uh, that you have to open the door to go out of the thing, uh, doctors wear underwear, you know, are, are, unless all these things somebody has written down somewhere or, you know, somehow the program found it to be useful for compression from some other text, uh, the information is not there. So that's an argument that like text is a lot lower fidelity than the, you know, the experience of our physical world. Got like. It. Yeah, so pictures you're, worth a thousand words, like that <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Well, in this case, pictures aren't really so the the richest aspect of the physical world isn't even just pictures. It's the uh, it's the interactivity exactly. with the world. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's being able to um, 
yeah, interact. It's almost like it's almost like if you could interact. So I I I disagree. Well, maybe I agree with you that picture is worth a thousand words, but a thousand. It's that, still, yeah, it's, you could say you could capture it with a GPT X. <laughs> so I wonder if there's some interactive element where a system could live in text world where it could um, be part of the chat, be part of, you know, talking to people. It's, it's interesting. I mean, fundamentally, so you, you're making a statement about the limitation of text. I Okay, let's, so let's say we have a text corpus that includes basically every experience we could possibly have. I mean, just a very large corpus of text uh, and also interactive components. I guess the question is whether the neural network architecture, these very simple transformers, but if they had like hundreds of trillions or whatever comes after a trillion uh, parameters, whether that could store the information uh, needed that's architecturally do you have like do you have thoughts about the limitation on that side of things of, with neural networks i mean so transformer is you know still a feed forward neural network this uh, uh it's it has a very uh interesting architecture which is good for uh text modeling and probably some aspects of uh video modeling but it is still a feed forward architecture and you it, believe in the the feedback mechanism the recursion oh and and also cause you know, causality, like, you know, being able to do counterfactual reasoning, being able to do, you know, intervention, so which is uh, uh, um, uh, actions in the world. Uh, so all those things uh, require different kinds of models to be built. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think uh, Transformers uh, captures that uh, family. It is very good at statistical modeling of text. Uh, yeah. and, and it will become better and better with more data, uh, bigger models. But that is only going to get so far you know finally when you in uh, so i had this joke on uh uh twitter saying that hey this is a model that has read all of quantum mechanics uh, and uh, theory of relativity and we are asking it to do text completion or yeah. you know we are asking asking it to solve simple puzzles yeah. that you know when when you have agi if you if you, you know that's not what you ask a system to do if it has you know, we ask, we'll ask the system to do experiments. You know, what should, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, and come up with hypothesis and uh, you know revise the hypothesis based on evidence from experiments. All those things, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the things that we want the system to do when we have AGI, not solve simple puzzles. So, 